Hello, I'm Matt. Welcome to XBeyond 360's educational series. In this video, we're gonna take a look at charging from more of a technical support perspective for best practice and troubleshooting. Let's start with best practice. The first thing to consider when selecting a charger is to verify that it has the ability to apply the lithium iron phosphate charge profile. It is important to ensure that the correct voltage and current is introduced at the proper times for the bulk, absorption, and float stages of the charging cycle. Secondly, it is necessary to select an appropriate charge rate. Charge rates are expressed as ratios of C. For example, a 0.5 C charge rate for a 100 amp hour battery would be 50 amps. Using Xbeon 360's recommendations for our batteries, the following would apply if we use a 100 amp hour battery as an example. Optimal charge rate is 0.2 C or 20 amps. Quick charge rate is 0.2 C for 32 to 50 Fahrenheit or 20 amps. Quick charge rate is 0.5C for 50 to 140 Fahrenheit or 50 amps. To properly apply these guidelines, you will need to establish a C rate for the actual battery or battery bank that you are using. For a single battery, you can use the C ratios directly. If you have a battery bank, then you will need to calculate its effective capacity. For example, a string of 420 amp hour batteries configured in parallel would have an effective capacity of 480 amp hours. If you want to charge at a 0.2 C rate, you will need to charge at 96 amps. Another factor to take into consideration when charging is the ambient temperature in the area that the batteries are stored. The lithium iron phosphate chemistry is sensitive to temperature extremes, so it is important to take that into account when choosing a C rate or deciding whether to charge at all. If you find yourselves outside of the temperature limits for charging, it is best to not charge at that time. The Internal Battery Management System, or BMS, is designed to protect the battery and cells from damage when temperatures are exceeded by shutting itself down. This can be avoided by waiting until temperatures return to acceptable limits. Xbeyond 360 recommends that you install your batteries inside of your vehicle where they are in a temperature-controlled environment. This will help you dramatically reduce some of the problems associated with cold weather charging. There are other ways to mitigate temperature extremes as well. For example, Xbeon 360 markets battery-specific heated thermal jackets encapsulated in heat-retaining insulated sleeves that help keep your batteries within their operating temperature limits when exposed to cold environments. For reference, Xbeon 360's recommended charge temperature range for the batteries is 32 to 140 Fahrenheit. If your battery bank is wired in a series configuration, it is worth considering the use of a multi-bank charger to ensure that each battery is receiving a full charge. A battery balancer is also recommended to help maintain balanced discharging for a series configured battery bank. Lastly, a battery monitor is an invaluable tool for staying aware of your battery system status with real-time capability. While troubleshooting, if you follow the steps listed in the next sections for DC charging, solar charging, or shore charging, you may find the fault yourself, or at least give the technical support representative a jump start on solving the problem. For direct current or DC charging, here are some things to check before calling technical support. Verify that the charger is set to the lithium charge profile and that the correct settings are programmed. Verify the batteries are all the same manufacturer, capacity, and age. Verify that the battery wiring is correct, which includes equal and short lengths between batteries, all interconnecting cables are installed in a balanced configuration, parallel or series configuration is correctly chosen for voltage and current. All connections are tight and torqued properly. Any fusing utilized is still functional. Any disconnect switch is functional and in operable position and identifying any potential parasitic draw sources. Using a digital voltmeter set to DC volts, measure the actual battery bank voltage and record for reference. Using the digital voltmeter set to DC volts, isolate the batteries individually and measure and record their voltages for reference. This can help identify a defective battery that might be affecting the whole string. Verify that if a battery monitor is being used, that it is programmed and calibrated correctly. For solar charging, here are some things to check before calling technical support. Perform all the tests specified in the previous DC charging section to verify the integrity of battery bank that the solar system is charging. 
Verify there is sufficient sunlight without shading for performing the following tests. Verify the solar panels are clean and free of any debris. Inspect all interconnections between solar panels for correctness or damage. Inspect the wiring where all the solar panels are combined and terminate it at the roof cap module for correctness or damage. Using a digital voltmeter set to DC volts, measure the output or PV voltage of each panel individually and then at the combination point before entering the roof cap module. Record these PV voltages for reference. Using the digital voltmeter set to DC volts, measure the voltage entering the solar charge controller PV input and verify that it reflects what was measured at the roof cap module. Record the voltage for reference. Using the digital voltmeter set to DC volts, measure the solar charge controller battery output and record that voltage for reference. Using the digital voltmeter set to DC volts, disconnect the solar charge controller output wires from the battery bank and measure the voltage at the end of those wires to verify that it matches what was measured at the solar charge controller output. Record the voltage for reference. For shore charging, here are some things to check before calling technical support. Verify that the correct breaker is in the on position at the shore power source. Please note, this will typically be a 50 amp breaker for larger systems like a motorhome or a 30 amp breaker for smaller applications like a travel trailer. Using a digital voltmeter set to alternating current bolts, measure the voltage at the shore power source receptacle and record the voltage for reference. Hazardous 120 to 240 volts AC may be present, so do not attempt this measurement if you lack the proper experience. Locate your RV power center and remove any protective covers to expose the internal wiring terminals. Once again, there may be 120 to 240 volts AC present, so caution should be applied. Locate the shore power AC terminals, which should be clearly labeled for identification. Using the digital voltmeter set to AC volts, measure the shore power voltage at those terminals and record the voltage for reference. Identify where the AC to DC converter output is terminated to the DC load bank terminals. Using the digital voltmeter set to DC volts, measure and record the voltage for reference. Verify that there are no trip circuit breakers. Verify that there are no blown fuses. Verify that there are no ground fault indicator or GFI type receptacles within the RV that may be tripped. A GFI receptacle may actually affect other outlets that are a part of the same circuit. Well, that covers charging from a technical support point of view. Thank you for watching our charging video. To view other product videos, user manuals, and specification sheets, visit xbeyond360.com.